So today I'm just kind of messing around in the garage. Thought I'd bring you guys along. We stripped out the the splines in an automatic transmission in a torque converter. Something I've never really seen before. Apparently it's not completely unheard of. So thought I'd bring you guys along. We cut apart a torque converter. I'd show you how they work, and we'll see if we can figure out why this one did what it did. And maybe I can give you a little backstory on this transmission right here that has around 30,000 miles on it and why it did it. Original OEM from 1991. Let's do it. So here we have an automatic transmission out of a front wheel drive car. This is actually a Mazda made this for, for Fords. I think Subaru is now using the same thing, stuff like that. You know, these transmissions and stuff, one company makes it and then every brand pretty much uses them. Anyway, this right here, this is your oil pump that pumps the builds pressure and engages your clutches and everything in the automatic transmission this spline right here this one right here is actually what the engine turns the torque converter turns and drives the entire car i can spin it barely with my fingers but pop over here to the torque converter let me turn on a light or something so you got these outer splines right here for your one-way spired clutch that which is this right here and these splines right here are supposed to be right here and you can see they're all missing if we go to the very back you can see a little bit of a tooth right here still remaining come out almost an inch worth of teeth now well, three quarters of an inch worth of teeth completely gone at the very very back right there um, there are splines you can see a notch at the bottom at the top roughly like a you know 11 and 5 but there are splines in there and those grab onto these splines right here now let me show you a good torque converter what's the new torque converter there you go you can see those splines nice and good and there's no fluid in there so you can see everything a little bit better so i'm going to go throw the transmission in right now and i'm not going to show you guys any of that we're just going to start i'm going to skip right forward in the video just to cutting apart the torque converter see if we can find out why this did what it did because I don't think there's any issues inside of the transmission. I don't think so. And then we'll talk about whether or not, you know, putting the new torque converter on fix the problem. And if we prevented something from happening again in the future. But I'm, I think I might know why that stripped out. And we'll talk about that after we cut that apart. You can see there's just a weld right here. It's actually uh, too big to fit in my lathe. But generally what they would do, because these are rebuildable, is you got this little post in the middle. You clamp that into the lathe, you spin it around, and you just cut out that weld, and then they fix it, and they can weld it back together. But, so I just have a bearing sit right there. It sits right in the center of here. Put it down. cap from the new one I'll break that weld there we go oh I gotta dump this out let me dump this out for a second okay the entire shell of this is bolted directly to the flex plate flywheel of the engine and spins at the engine speed the inside is connected to the transmission so it's one inside the other, but they're not actually physically connected. So the entire shell spinning at engine speed, high or low, whatever it is, the inside is connected to the transmission input that eventually touches your wheels and or spins your wheels. Okay, this right here, this is what you would call your pump. This is what moves fluid to move the transmission part. Anyway, so this pump is directly connected to the engine. You'll notice a bunch of different veins and passages inside here. Once we get to the transmission part, this part that's all connected to the transmission, we have our stator right here. It multiplies the torque. And then we have our impeller. Um, this is what the pump turns. And this has the splines that directly connects to the transmission. 
So this right here directly connects to the transmission and whatever this moves, the transmission moves essentially. So what happens is there's a, there's a set amount of fluid that's already kind of stays in the torque converter and some gets pumped in, but not as much as you think. Most of it actually just stays in here. The fluid's in here. And so the fluid comes in through here. The spinning motion of this throws the fluid out. It's like a fan blade. Pushes it into these little passages. You notice they just kind of line up. And when doing so, the fluid is spraying through that it turns it. So it sits there and turns this. But then the fluid comes out of these because it got thrown around the outside through these and back out of here. But when you're going at really slow RPM, the fluid that would come out of here would actually go in at an angle that doesn't lend itself too well to move it when it goes back into the pump. Like it would count, it would fight itself and you'd have a really sloppy transmission. So that's where the uh, stator comes in. The fluid actually hits there. And instead of the fluid going back at this angle, you'll notice that these little fins actually divert it back the opposite direction. And then it can go back through here and back out the right way. It multiplies the torque essentially. This is what is one of the main, re main reasons it's called a torque converter. Is, is this little guy right here. And this is the brain box of the entire torque converter. This does the majority of the work. So when it's going really slow, it's sitting there directing the flow of the fluid, but it has a one-way clutch, a sprag clutch inside here. You notice these gears right here. It allows me to spin it one way, but not the other. And this is actually coupled to the transmission. Um, but what it does is at slow RPM, it's diverting the fluid and the fluid, it's not allowing, like it's hitting these veins. I'm holding these splines and it's not allowing it to move this direction. So it's diverting the fluid back like this. But once you get enough RPM and this more closely matches the speed of this, it starts moving with it and it kind of gets out of the way and it does nothing. So it allows the flow of whatever it wants to do. Once this gets up to, about there's always going to be slippage but probably about 90 percent of this 80 to 90 percent of the speed of this to this then this kind of just idles and does nothing okay so there's always slippage in a, in a transmission one of the best things they ever invented was a lockup torque converter so you're like what is a lockup torque converter i'm going to show you what a lockup torque converter is let's get this out of the way we'll get this out of the way this is the addition and if you've ever done a clutch in a car you're like wait that's starting to kind of look these springs kind of look like a clutch because that's all this is this is just a clutch we got a clutch disc in here we got a machine surface right, right down here that it grabs onto so all this does is when the transmission wants this to engage it pumps fluid into here and locks this up and what it essentially does you know it's spinning freely is once it locks this up, it just locks everything up, locks the entire torque converter solid, so there's absolutely no slip. So it's one to one ratio. Without the lockup torque converter, you're probably about 90%. You know, maybe if somebody, if it's super efficient, maybe a little bit more than that, but you're always gonna have a 10% slippage, which creates heat and everything else. You'll notice down in here, there are splines. Right down here, this is on this particular transmission, the splines down here are what runs the rod into the transmission to run the pump, okay? On some transmissions, it's actually, it's, it's not down there. It's actually on the outside right here. There's just like two little teeth that runs the pump. A Little bit different design, doesn't really matter. You'll notice these little teeth right here, just lock up in between these different springs just to kind of dampen the, the motion, just like in a clutch of the, uh, the clutch actually grabbing, so they just fall into the little grooves, and there's no way I could move it by hand. But you know, it just gives a little bit of play, so it's not sharp when it when the transmission locks that up. It's more of a gradual grab. You know, it's just applying the clutch pedal for you. That's it. So hopefully that makes sense. No. So what if it, what fails in these? Um, your lockup torque converter, that clutch disc, of course, can strip out. 
Uh, you could break teeth off. Um, this right here, the sprag clutch can go out. And if the sprag clutch goes out, it can do one of two things. One, it can lock up. And so it's always spinning with it and you'll you'll end up having poor fluid flow. It can, I, I'm assuming the sprag clutch could break like the, so it can move dire both directions. And if it moved both directions, you'd have a really weak torque converter. Like you'd push on the gas pedal and it would just slowly build up and as got super, it eventually would kind of grab. That would probably be the sprag clutch um, just failing. Um, I'm not going to go in too much to how a sprag clutch works, but essentially there's a little ramp, a bunch of little mini ramps and just little uh, roller, they look like roller ball bearings. And essentially one way they kind of get pinched and it just kind of locks up. And the other way the ramp, they kind of ramp down and so there's room for them to run. But that's about it. So what do I actually think would fail on this? Well, I looked up quite a few things and it's always, you know, what you would think, a, a sharp impact. And so there are quite a few dodges and stuff like that that have this happen for these splines right here to strip out. And usually that's only when you increase horsepower and stuff like that, like you would expect. Too much power for it to handle, strips it out. Um, Ford Taurus has had a lot of issues, but it was more with the uh, pump shaft. So all these Ford, there's millions of Ford Tauruses that had issues. And the pump shaft would strip out because these were like powdered centered gears you know, it was a powdered metal, which they use in a lot of stuff. It, it works good, but apparently it was not good for this application. Um, I think this happened. This transmission and engine came out of a car with about 20,000 miles that had rolled over. So the car had rolled over and I, in that scenario, if this transmission was in lockup mode and it, you know, the wheels left the ground, you're doing 40 miles an hour and then they re-grip, there's a chance you could fracture and strip those splines strap you know at least fracture them okay that was uh 10 to 15,000 miles ago though so it's driven another 10 to 15,000 miles which isn't a ton relatively but there's not a ton of horsepower here in this little front wheel drive car two little 1.9 liter car that it would actually you would actually might not even notice it if it was just kind of fractured because the car would probably still move the other option is not even a couple of months ago, my daughter that was driving this car hit the train tracks and there was a track that was a little bit up, completely slashed one of the tires right through the sidewall. Everything else destroyed the tire. So that could have been it too. You're doing, you hit train tracks at 40 miles an hour, just flowing along with traffic. You hit the wrong side of it or something and boom, that could also just lock up and cause a sudden jar that just stripped those threads. You know, these aren't going to be the strongest splines and thread uh, splines i said threads splines in there with being this is a, just a small little compact car but i think that's probably what happened because i don't see any other damage there are a few little metal debris in here but i think it pretty much caught them all i'm not worried about them being in the transmission because they still got to go through the filter and everything else essentially what i'm told is after this so fluid gets pumped in but anything after this just goes right into the pan. So any fluid that comes out of the torque converter just goes in the pan. But for the most part, most fluid stays in the torque converter with very little added other than when it goes into lockup mode, then more fluid is pushed in there. That's my understanding, um, but it doesn't change out that much fluid. Hopefully that's, it's kind of cool just to see inside. Getting it. Before, so you put in reverse and it would do nothing, like not even a little bit of jerk that you normally get. Yep, see, I got a jerk right there, it's up off the ground. Just let go of the brake, reverse works. Brake, drive, jerks. All right, felt it shift through all three gears. We're off the ground, so it does it really fast. Do that again. Let's see. If, I'll just let off the gas. I gave you a little bit of gas. First.
Let's see, one more thing. I just barely put new tires on too, and I bubble balanced them. And everybody's like, you can't bubble balance, it sucks, you can't get, so these are, nothing's holding them. So if there's any out of balance, these things are gonna swing around because the suspension's the only thing holding them up. So let's take them up to 70 miles an hour and you watch this and you tell me how much it doesn't wiggle. You hit almost 80 there. No vibration at all. Bubble balancing. Look at this. What do you think, Ginger? A fluffy pink seat belt and a skeleton in the back seat. <laughs> Gotta make your car your own, you know? <laughs> Some people don't get it. So this leaf blower is the engine. So I'm the engine, you are the torque converter. Let's go. Go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, we broke the splines.